Usa. Feeling anxious, stressed, fear of the unknown while studying for the PMH and P board certification? Well, you're not alone. My name is Dr. Lopez, and today I will crack the code, a little bit of a cracking of the code of the PMH and P board certification. This is part of our crash course review. Hi, you guys. Stuff that will be useful to you, stuff that you need to know. Take a note, subscribe to our channel, or even better, go to www.mpexamcoach. Sign up to one of our course. Say goodbye to anxiety and hello, PMHMP board certified. See you soon. Watch our channel. Bye. Right. So, when to change medications? Antidepressants, specifically. You have to wait two weeks for the washout period. Why the washout period? To degenerate, not regenerate, degenerate, to break down. However, there is ferocity to anything. You got to wait six weeks, five, six weeks. MAOIs to Prozac, quarantines, two weeks. Prozac to MAOIs, five weeks. Prozac to any other one. Uh, to loxetine, five weeks. Plain safe. Okay. Now, when you provide, when you give Prozac, be a, a be a, acutely aware that it could cause insomnia. So what do you think your action is to give the medication during the morning? Okay. Be aware of tryptins that can cause serotonin syndrome. You want to always collaborate with the PCM and switch to an NDRI medication that does not have serotonin, like Wellbutrin. Right, and why is SSRI SSRI the safest? Because it has the least, the least likely to cause overdose out of those antidepressants. But there is one more thing, like excitalopram is the least drug to drug interaction. So when it comes to SSRIs. Well, when it comes to antidepressant, SSRIs is the best because if the patient consume more pills than they were prescribed, they are least likely to die of an overdose. But out of the SSRIs, Lexapro is the one that it has the fewer drug to drug interactions. Pain is important. How are you going to take care of pain? Two class of medications are notorious for being prescribed due to its uh, benefit towards pain, SNRIs, TCAs, and alpha-2 delta ligands, the, the, the GABA painters, uh, pregabalin. If you are given a choice with the SNRI and TCA, pick the SNRI. When prescribing antidepressant, your number one concern, especially with males, is sexual dysfunction. So what medication would you prescribe then? Bupropion. Great. So if you have the symptoms of depression and low energy, what medication would you prescribe? Bupropion. Okay. When would you not prescribe bupropion? Seizures and eating disorders. These are contraindication for bupropion. Now, know that uh, SSRIs can also cause anxiety in older adults. PPIs. Do not give PPIs at least two hours apart from any other antipsychotropic drugs. So, what are they? Omeprazole pentaprazole 
two hours away from any psychotropic drugs. Schizophrenia. You need to know the positive symptoms. Those are added to normal behavior, and it shouldn't be that. Hallucination. Seeing things, feeling things, smelling things that are not there. Delusion. Having strong belief that they are not based on reality, right? And you have to think of those that are being persecuted or, or, or someone else is in love with you and you have never met the person. Thought disorder, what are they? Unusual, dysfunctional ways of thinking. Movement disorder, agitated body movements, okay? Now, the negative symptoms are those that are lose or decrease in ability to plain speak, assess, and so forth, right? So decrease ability to initiate a sudden uh, planned activity, okay? So when it comes to schizophrenia, I told you just like the bipolar, schizophrenia age is important. You need to memorize age, 18 to 25 for males, Females, 25 to 35. Body parts, schizophrenia, the brain. What do you see? Well, you are going to see a very different ventricular enlargement. Ventricular enlargement. Big Vs for the schizophrenia. Okay? So we talked about ADHD and what kind of a brain functions they see it that's abnormal, right? So schizophrenia may exhibit changes in prefrontal cortex, amygdala, basal ganglia, and the hippocampus and the limbic system. And this may lead to aggression, possibilities, uh, problems with abstract thinking. It makes sense, doesn't it? So if schizophrenia is caused, is responsible for the positive symptoms, is the increase of dopamine, do you think that stimulants would be okay to give for a schizophrenic patient? You better not. You're gonna stimulate that the dopamine release, right? So schizophrenia has a low tolerability also for alpha-2 undernergic medications, so like clonidine, glufosine. Yes, that means that uh, if you can't give dopamine stimulants, then what can you give, right? You can give clonidine or glufosine, it's just not going to work as it would for others. Usa. I know the stress is kicking in. I know you're feeling overwhelmed. Make it life easy for you. Come study with us. My name is Dr. Lopez. I do care that you pass or it's zero dollars money back guarantee. I actually have a coupon for you making it easy and affordable to join today. No excuse. You can attend unlimited life classes or even watch all our program in the recorded through our app or your computer easy right join us today use the coupon code pass i'll see you when you become a pmhmp board certified or join us for one of our live classes bye bye